welcome back. I have finished my uh, three quarters inch of, of plain stockinette. This is the third time I am making this video because I've kept making mistakes, but we have persisted. Um, okay, so I've done my three quarters inch here. We're gonna come back to the directions. Um, so this says join C2, which is color two, change to size B needles, which is your larger needles, and work all 14 rows of the zigzag pattern. So we have two new things going on at once, joining the new color and also getting the bigger needle size. I'm going to go ahead and suggest that you do one more round of plain stockinette and get it, get your project on the bigger needles first, and then join the color to and start the zigzag pattern so that you're only dealing with one new thing at a time. Uh, I did this, I'm an experienced knitter. Um, it would definitely be a good idea for somebody who's less experienced, um, just so that we're not working with an old needle, a new needle, and two different colors of yarn at the same time, it sounded like a recipe for a difficult time. So go ahead and do that. I've already put my my uh, bigger needles on here, so I'm ready to do that. If you need to pause here, pause here, um, and then come back, and um, we'll be ready. For those of us, here we go. Join color two and start the chart. All right, um, my my mistake that necessitated another filming is um, I did not have this nice pink box when I was first looking at the pattern, um, and I was knitting this whole chart when really I should have only been knitting in this box. So that's a good visual. Um, I'm going to get a little closer here so I can show you how to read this chart. So first we have the legend over here. Um, each one of these stitch or each one of these boxes represents a stitch. So all of the gray boxes will be color one, which in my case is the red. The white boxes will be color two, in my case is the gray. Um, the dark box around is the repeat, which I did not see originally, uh, and that is the dark gray box. It doesn't come out very well when you're printing it. It's more obvious when you're looking at it on your computer screen. Um, so that was user error, my mistake. <laughs> um, so in my case, it's pretty clear, like the darker color is color one, the lighter color is color two. I have before if my uh, colors that I am knitting in don't match the colors that are on the chart, uh, take a colored pencil, color in your boxes with the colors that you're using to match up with your chart it's going to make it easier when you're reading the chart and then uh, uh, translating that into your pattern. The next thing I want you to notice is down here along the bottom and up along the side along the top are numbers. Uh, these are the stitches across. These are the rows. So we will only ever be working with one row of the pattern at a time. Um, and then we, you also notice the numbers one starts in the bottom right corner. We do read patterns right to left and bottom to top. So, um, what I like to do is take a little sticky note, put it here so that I'm only looking at the row that I am working with. They sell fancy charts with magnets that, that can help you keep track of this. You're absolutely welcome to get something like that. I have had good luck just with sticky notes. Um, so here we're starting at the right side, right? So for me, this would be red, 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 gray, red, red, red. We're gonna ignore this stitch for now. Um, that was a mistake I made earlier. So, and then we, 
once we get all the way to the end, we go back to the beginning of the round. Red, 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 gray, red, red, red. And we're going to repeat this all the way around the hat. And um, if I have the correct number of stitches, which I know I do because I just counted, at the end there will be one stitch left to finish out the round. And that's when we come to this guy at the end. So let's get cracking on that. All right, I'm at the beginning of my round. Put my stitch marker here, it had fallen off. So I have four reds and then a gray. So one, two, three, four, ready for a gray. I have my red yarn on the right, or your color one yarn on the right, and my color two, which in my case is gray, will be sitting on the left. This will be important. Um, we have more red in this row, round row than gray. We want the dominant color of the row on the right, the secondary color on the left. And then as we move up the chart, you'll see that we end up getting more and more and more of color too. At one point, we will switch the yarn around. It just makes the tension better. Um, side note, tension is um, how even our stitches are. And so we don't get too tight or too loose. So to add the second color, I have the end of my... This is the end. I'm going to have it on the left, the end of my, my gray. I'm going to go in as if to knit. Bring the yarn around, pull through, just a regular knit stitch. I am holding the, the end with my two fingers over here just to keep it um, tight so that, again, we don't have a really loose or a really tight stitch here. So here I'm gonna show you how to hold, hold the two yarns at the same time. I'm gonna take these three fingers, grab both strands. I still have the gray on the left, red on the right. They're gonna, these three fingers are gonna hold both. I'm gonna put my, my index finger in between the the strands of yarn here so that I am let's see down here on my pattern I have three reds so that when I am bringing the yarn over it's really easy to just decide which one I want to put over you see that so I'm doing three reds I did my three reds and then I'm going to start over with four reds again. Um, as I am going around, we're going to be repeating this, uh, um, this pattern several times as we go around the hat. So I can see now that I've gotten going, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it'll be the rest of the way around. It'll be seven reds, one gray, seven, one. So I can go ahead and finish the seven. Okay, so now we're ready for a gray. I have spaced out these seven stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've spaced them out a little bit on my right needle. And that is so that when I'm bringing my my gray over to loop it around. I've got quite a bit of space there and I'm and I need that so that the gray doesn't doesn't get tight and bunch up these stitches. If we if we bunch up those stitches, it's going to make our hat look real wonky because we are scrunching the stitches in that row. That is another reason why they had to switch to larger needles for the color work portion, is it helps make sure that this tension here is not too tight 
and so that the the stitches will look similar to down here as up here because color work naturally will make your stitches a little bit tighter. So a couple of things that we're doing to work against that is spacing out the stitches a little bit when we have several in a row that are the other color. Um, and then as we make that stitch with the gray, we're not going to pull it real tight so that this loop back here can, can hang out back there and be fine. And then also the bigger stitches. So we're going to continue around with seven red. One gray, red, again, see how I pulled that? We don't have to make it like the entire length of the needle. There's no magic n distance here. I'm just making sure that they're not all bunched up you know, as, as much as we are over here, for example. I'm just going to keep repeating all the way around. through so he's not in my way to me this part is so fun the the color work watching the pattern emerge as you get a few more rows down the line it, it goes so fast for me One, two, three, four, five. Um, I've done a lot of color work yoke sweaters and it just adds a lot of fun All right, so we're coming to the end here. We could see here we had a gray, red, 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 gray, red, 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 and then we had one stitch left over just like we had anticipated. So I'm gonna go ahead and do red for that one since that's the end. We have finished our first round of color work. 
gonna move my my sticky and then we're just gonna move right on up as we do the round. So then this next round, we're gonna start with red, red, red. Gray, red, gray, red, red. Continuing all the way up, all the way through the 14 rows. And then meet me back here. 